What's going on everyone? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we're going to be asking the question, is it really carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is a mononeuropathy that involves the median nerve, which travels through the carpal tunnel around your wrist area. And individuals who have carpal tunnel syndrome usually have numbness and tingling around their three and a half fingers on the medial side, so their thumb, index, middle, and half of their ulnar uh, finger. And in severe cases, they can develop atrophy of the muscles of that nerve when it's compressed for a longer period of time. So you'll see thenar atrophy or atrophy of the muscles around your thumb because a lot of the muscles of the thumb that move the thumb in different positions are innervated by that nerve. So if that nerve is irritated, or compressed for a longer period of time, you can get that weakness, you can get numbness, you can get tingling, you can get pain. And uh, there are different treatments for it, such as physiotherapy, a cortisone injection, and the most effective is usually a carpal tunnel release surgery where they take pressure off of that nerve where the carpal, where the median nerve runs through by cutting the transverse carpal ligament to free up some of that space. Because if we think about it, the carpal tunnel and the median nerve, there are a bunch of tendons that run in that area as well alongside the nerve. So if it is compressed uh, or even genetically, if you have a smaller carpal tunnel, sometimes individuals with diabetes or pregnant ladies can be predisposed to carpal tunnel syndrome. However, individuals who believe that they have carpal tunnel syndrome and oftentimes it's bilaterally, so they say they have bilateral uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, we always have to look at the neck. And how do we differentiate carpal tunnel from a cervical spine radiculopathy? We have to do other tests to rule out the neck as the contributor for an individual if they feel a predominant carpal tunnel-like symptoms. So how do we do that? Let's talk about it. If you only had carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms, movement of the neck should not elicit any of the numbness and tingling and pain and weakness in your hands. So we would look at movements of the neck. So we look at flexion, extension, rotation, side bend, and then there is a test called Wainer's cluster. And we're basically trying to see if any of these movements reproduce or relieve the symptoms that you're having in your hand and your wrist. So what are these tests? The first test is the Sperling's test, where if you had symptoms in your left hand, we would ask you to side bend, rotate, and extend your neck and we're trying to close down that tunnel where that nerve root comes off of and we're trying to see if that reproduces your symptoms and if it does then that gives us a bit more suspicion on maybe the neck playing a role in the symptoms the next test we would do is we would apply a traction force on your neck to see whether or not that relieves the symptoms and if it does then again we're looking at the the neck as being the possible contributor to the symptoms we're looking at compression so if i apply a pressure downwards does that reproduce those symptoms going down your arm and primarily in your wrist and we're looking to see if you can rotate your neck more than 45 degrees each way and if three of those four tests are positive there's a higher likelihood that you have cervical spine radiculopathy because remember the median nerve so that nerve that is affected with carpal tunnel it originates around your neck area and and specifically at the levels of C6 to T1, those roots or those levels of the spine uh, eventually connect to form that median nerve. So we have to look at the neck first before we determine whether or not it is, it is a true carpal tunnel. What are some other tests that we can look at to see if it is carpal tunnel versus a cervical spine radiculopathy? If you put your hand on your head and that relieves the symptoms, then that it may be an indicator that that nerve is being irritated higher around your neck versus in your wrist. We would look at reflexes, so where we use a reflex hammer and compare side to side, and if there's l less of a reflex on the side where you believe you have the carpal tunnel compared to your unaffected side, that gives us a, a bit of an indicator in terms of it possibly being more in the cervical spine. We're looking at dermatomes, so we're assessing sensation in each level and, and each patch of your skin is correlated with a certain level around your neck. So again, if you have carpal tunnel, you wouldn't notice any changes in your sensation around the inside of your hand or outside of your hand in the forearm or in the upper arm, because again, those nerves are innervated by the levels in your cervical spine, which would correlate to where your neck is versus to just that nerve being irritated from the wrist distally or, or towards the fingers. 
So we're looking at dermatomal changes, we're looking at reflexes, we're looking at that Wainers cluster or the Sperling's test. We're looking at myotome. So we're looking at the strength of the signal that's being sent from the neck to tell the muscles to turn on. And again, each level is corresponding with a set of different muscles. So if it's a C6 radiculopathy or the nerves are injured around or, or the C6 nerve root is being irritated or compressed or there's inflammation around that area, we're looking to see how strong is your wrist extension and your elbow flexion. So again, we're trying to compare both sides and seeing if there's any form of weakness that may indicate these symptoms are coming from your neck versus your wrist. Because again, if you just had a carpal tunnel, there wouldn't be any strength differences above where that carpal tunnel is irritated, which would be muscles of your elbow. And then again, we would look at different levels. So C5 is usually associated with shoulder abduction. C6 is usually elbow flexion and wrist extension. C7 is usually elbow extension and wrist flexion. So again, we would be doing all those different tests and looking to see if there's weakness side to side to lead us to believe whether or not it's coming from the neck versus the wrist. And then C8 is your fingers, so finger flexors, so bending your fingers. And then T1 would be abduction, so spreading your fingers apart and then testing to see if you can keep that position. So again, testing each level of the nerve roots to see if there's any differences side to side. And then the other thing that we're looking at is symptoms such as, oh, the pain wakes me up in the middle of the night, so I have to shake my hand when I wake up in the middle of the night and shaking that hand helps to make the symptoms better. And if it does make the symptoms better with shaking of your hand, then that leads us to believe that it may be more that the nerve is irritated at the level of the wrist versus in the neck. Because if the injury was around the level of the neck, then this wouldn't relieve the symptoms because again, the, the nerve is being injured lower down. Another test that you can look at to see if, if it is more likely to be carpal tunnel is a Tonell's test. So that's where you tap that wrist crease area and you're looking to see if that reproduces those numbness and tingling symptoms and sensation in those three and a half fingers with that tapping compared side to side. And again, if that is reproducing the tingling, then that's more carpal tunnel versus coming from the neck. Another test you could do is the Phalanx test. So that's where you bring your wrist sense of flexion and maintain this position for 30 seconds and see whether or not there is a reproduction of those numbness and tingling symptoms that you feel in your hands and fingers. And then you can also do the reverse phalanx test where now your wrist or the prayer position where your, where your hands are in wrist extension, where your wrists are in extension. And again, you hold this for 30 seconds and then we're trying to see if we can reproduce those symptoms after 30 seconds of maintaining this position. The other thing to be mindful of is some individuals can have a double crush pathology where they both have a cervical spine radiculopathy and the symptoms of carpal tunnel as well. How do I share this information? It's important because if you say you have bilateral carpal tunnel and then you know you, you get your carpal tunnel release surgery on both sides, you get trigger point injections and none of that is helping, well then it's, it's, it's pretty frustrating probably for you in terms of you're going through all these tests, spending all this money or, or using all these resources and wasting all this time and then lo and behold, the, the irritation or the compression wasn't actually at your wrist, it was, it was in your neck or somewhere else along the path of where that median nerve travels through to end up in the wrist. So people say treat the symptoms, not the cause. I tend to, to disagree on that to, to some extent, because again, if you treat the symptoms in that case with just the, the tingling and the numbness in the hands, thinking it's carpal tunnel, but it was actually coming from your neck, then the healthcare system didn't do their due diligence to rule out a condition from the neck. So there you have it. We went over some ways to differentiate a cervical spine radiculopathy versus carpal tunnel syndrome. We went over needing to make sure we have to look at our reflexes, myotomes, dermatomes, special tests, so the Sperling's test, the, the, the cervical distraction test, relieving symptoms, compression test, reproducing the symptoms, can you rotate more than 45 degrees of your neck? Does any movement of your neck reproduce those symptoms in your arm and in your wrist and the numbness and tingling in your wrist? We looked at specific tests for carpal tunnel. So, so the prayer position or the reverse phalanx, phalanx, tunnels test. Do you get relief when you shake your hand being more indicative of a carpal tunnel syndrome if you are having those symptoms? So let me know what you thought about this video. Hopefully you found some value. 
Do you have carpal tunnel syndrome or believe you have it? Let me know down in the comments below what has worked and what hasn't. Do you have cervical spine radiculopathy? Or do you think or thought that you had carpal tunnel syndrome that later turned out to be an actual issue with your neck in the form of the cervical spine radiculopathy? Let me know below how your treatment and your experience has been in the healthcare system, if you feel comfortable sharing. Until then, if you find value in my videos, consider checking out some of my other videos where I go over various physio, medical, and exercise related content. And if you still find value, please consider subscribing. It really allows my channel to grow and allows me to reach a wider audience. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.